Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom. Oh, too bright. That looks better. So, it's almost been three months since we went on spring break for UNC and we never came back. Let me in. Let me in. And I speak for every UNC student saying we were all pretty worried about what was going to happen with fall semester. But we finally got some news from Chancellor Kevin Gushwitz and he has delivered this email to us and I'm also going to be going over some other emails. I just wanted to take a few days to get all the information together so I can tell you about, you know, our plan for going back in the fall. Uh, with everything still uncertain with coronavirus. So the first takeaway is, yes, we will be going back in the fall. Now, a lot of people are getting mad about this because they say it's unsafe, it's, it's not good for us, but don't worry, there's other stuff in here that people are just glossing over and saying we shouldn't go back at all. So the first day of class is going to be on August 10th. I, I don't know when it is usually, I think it's like, over a week or maybe even two weeks later um i think i think last year was like 20 21st or something maybe um so we are starting school earlier and we're also going to be moving in earlier so i think move in day last year was like the, the 16th or the 17th or something um this year uh carolina housing says that they want to do it um on august 3rd actually so move-in's also going to be different. Um, how it's gonna work is you're actually going to be given an appointment time, just like you were given an appointment time to move out and get all your stuff out. You're also going to be assigned an appointment time to move in. So you may be moving in August 3rd, or you might be moving in later. Um, they haven't given all the details about that yet, but I'm pretty sure the earliest people can move in is August 3rd, and you have to be moving in on your assigned uh, time to, to move in. <laughs> but the biggest change is that um, final exams, the last one is going to be on November 24th, that's right before Thanksgiving, and we're gonna have no breaks in between. So there's no fall break, um, I'm pretty sure there's no Labor Day break, um, yeah, no, uh, the university will observe Labor Day, University Day, but will eliminate fall break. And basically, they don't want you going home at all during this time. Um, basically, when you show up to campus on August 3rd or around then, you won't be going back home until November 24th. And this also means you get about a six week winter break, which means, um, you know, that's gonna be a, a lot of time where maybe you might be quarantining or something. Maybe they're gonna have us, uh, when we get news about spring semester, maybe we come back early for spring, but we self quarantine once we uh, get back to campus. So maybe they want us back on like January 1st or very late December, but then classes don't start until like January 14th or 15th. It also says students participating in co-curricular activities like Carolina Athletics, ROTC, Marching Tar Heels, they will be invited back to campus in similar phased approach. So maybe we're getting sports back. I, I don't know about that, um, but they have that in here. I just assumed that all the athletes would come back just like we would. So I don't know why that specifically is in there unless there's a chance sports might come back. So class sizes are saying they're going to adjust them for appropriate physical distancing. So what they're actually saying about this is, I think around a class of more than 50 people, I think that they're going to be completely remotely online. So you'll stay in your dorm and you'll have your class on Zoom, but um, if you have a recitation or something, maybe some of these classes are getting recitations now if they are online. Um, you'll go to that recitation and it will be a smaller classroom environment, but the big class will be still on Zoom. 
and to enter and exit the building it's a one-way corridor so there's going when you get to a building there's going to be one way you can enter and then you can't turn around if you're going to exit that building you have to keep going down the hall to exit as far as i know smaller classes still going to meet in person and they're going to be one of the few things that don't really change you're going to have that same experience in a small classroom they said they're also going to be extending the time in between classes so what I'm getting from that is that they're just going to try to separate the blocks of classes a lot more, which means that um, I think they're just like, so like if you had like class from 9.30 to 10 and then 10.30 to 11.30, they're going to spread that out to where like that class that was going to start at 10 is now going to start at like 11 or something. So with that bigger space in between, it allows people to um, leave classes so everyone's not like leaving at once. I know um, around like that 11 o'clock time or 12 o'clock time at lunch, everyone's just packed in there where they all got out of their classes at once and are trying to get into Lenore. So I think they're trying to limit that to where not as many people are gonna be crammed in together. And they said that's going to end up causing some classes to be uh, during the night actually going going into the evening so you might have like maybe an eight o'clock or nine o'clock class because of this they also said that up to 1,000 new students are going to be able to participate in a new experience called Carolina Away and this is the one I'm most confused about I, I think they didn't describe this one the best because at first I thought oh students that maybe have an underlying condition or something can't come back to campus or something they can just stay home and do their classes but then they start describing that um, this is going to be a program sort of dedicated to COVID-19 or something they're going to focus on the the impact of COVID-19 and they're going to have small group experiences so it, it seems almost like a, a study abroad program from home um, what I'm getting from it but also it says you're going to be doing general education curriculum as well so uh, but then later on down it says that all classes are going to be required to be recorded so if a student feels like they don't want to come back to campus or they don't feel safe coming to class then they could just watch it online so I feel like this sort of solves the problem for everyone because if you want to come back to campus then you can but if you feel nervous if you don't feel safe if you have that complaint then you can just stay at home like it's a win-win for every single possible person in this situation also lots of labs are going to be at 50 percent capacity i've never taken a lab before i know how it works but i think that probably means if you're trying to pick up a lab and be part of one it's going to be a lot harder to get into one and then we get into housing and this is the interesting one because housing's still going to operate at normal capacity so there's not going to be any changes to how many how many people are living in a hall um but they are taking two uh dorms offline and people have said these are most likely going to be uh dorms on north campus and one of them is going to be used for people who have already tested positive for corona that's where they're going to stay and then another dorm is going to be used for people who have been in contact with those that have tested positive also people with underlying conditions that it may not be safe for them to be in a dorm with a roommate they're going to be turning a lot of the double rooms into single rooms so you'll have a room all to yourself another interesting thing that I don't think a lot of people have really read into is the dining service so in Lenore in the the main street ground floor that's where you've got like your chick-fil-a and all the different restaurants where you can use plus swipes or you can pay with a credit card or something um, they said they're now limiting that to people that have a meal plan so if you usually go in and go into Chick-fil-A and pay with your credit card or something, you're not going to be able to do that anymore. It says you will be required to have a dining plan, but they're actually opening up um, a lot of new meal plan options. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a meal plan probably with just plus swipes on it or something, or maybe a meal plan with just flex on it. Um, so I still feel like you'll be able to eat there without having to get like an actual dining plan that has the the swipes to get into the all you can eat on the top of Lenore or into Chase. Um, so I feel like 
for the most part, it's just that you're not going to be able to just walk in with your credit card anymore. And, and I feel like that's to just make sure only students are unit using um, the restaurants um, and there's no visitors coming in and just buying Chick-fil-A and eating in there. Um, so they're trying to keep it to a students only dining service. It says seating is also being reduced in dining halls. Um, so those dining halls are already packed a lot around dinner time and everything. So now there's going to be even less seating, but um, they're giving options like takeout, um, mobile ordering and food trucks um, just so that uh, everyone's not trying to fight for when a seat opens up at, inside the dining hall. It also says that they will also have uh, meal delivery and pickup stations for food as well. And they're also going to be cleaning a lot. So every hour they're going to be cleaning the bathrooms. Every time a table is used, they're going to sanitize that down before the next person can use it. So I really feel like they're doing a lot to make sure everything is as clean as possible. UNC Health is also one of the leading fighters against coronavirus. So um, if you need a test, um, you're gonna be able to get one uh, straight through Campus Health, which is great. Um, I'm glad we have such an amazing um, uh, health department at our school because uh, that's exactly what we need during this time. And UNC is like far, way farther into development than any other school as far as coronavirus. I feel like that, I think they got like the first virus shipped them around like January or February, so they've been on top of this for a very long time. And that is all the news they have as of right now. Um, and I feel like we're going to probably get some more news in the coming weeks because lots of people have questions. But one other thing, they're also going to be finally using the CARES Act funding that they received from the government. So they said coming in like, I think like August or September, students who are current students at UNC will receive that funding, which is great. I, I wish that we could receive it earlier, but that's, they said that's going to be the earliest that we can receive it. So that's going to help us out a lot, especially anyone who's in financial hardship right now because of coronavirus. But yeah, let me know what you think about all this. Um, do you like these changes? Do you wish they did something different? Let me know in the comments below and hopefully I will see you back on campus in the fall.